Oh, hi there. Are you here for my flap tour? Well, come on in. Speak friend and enter. So welcome to my flat tour. I know you guys have been asking for this for a really, really long time. There's been two main reasons that I haven't posted this yet. The big one being I have been here a year, but this whole year I have been working on the flat still. I've been doing renovations. Well, I've not been doing them myself. Someone's been helping me with my renovations and just making the flat look absolutely perfect. And it didn't real, really feel complete. And the second reason is Lauren, who's behind the camera, is the person helping me film this. And I wanted to wait until she came down to be able to help me film this because I just thought it'd be a bit more fun than me setting up my tripod. So hopefully those two things combined mean that this is a really fun flat tour. My flat is finished pretty much there's a couple of more behind the scenes things to be done but as far as like the aesthetic visual part of the flat everything is finished I think I think there'll always be things I want to change but I've been here just over a year now I'm so happy to call this my home I'm so proud of myself for doing this on my own as well and I really really can't wait to show you around so we're gonna start with my bedroom I'm gonna go into my office my lounge my kitchen and show you my bathrooms along the way as well because who doesn't love to see a bathroom the rooms I have renovated in this flat as well my main ensuite has been completely redone apart from the toilet <laughs> that is the only thing that's remained the main bathroom has had quite a few bits changed but some bits have stayed the same and my kitchen has been pretty much redone but not pulled out i will explain more to you about that when we're in the kitchen so as dodgy as it sounds let's go to my bedroom as i said <laughs> i feel like i'm almost haunted right now and i'm being a vet fielding this is my bedroom so this is my bedroom this is my lovely bed i have new autumnal bed sheets on especially for this video and i really wanted to get something paisley autumnal because i had paisley summer on before but these ones are from urban outfitters where most of my bed sheets are from but there is a lot of yellow in this room to time with the rest of the flat as you'll see when we go through but i also wanted to include other colors in here as well so i have a kind of dirty blue feature wall in here a lighter color that i just fell in love with when i saw the paint samples and that is layered with my mapperful posters which are Oxford and Hobbiton. I got Oxford and Hobbiton because Hobbiton is obviously Lord of the Rings and Oxford is not only the place I was born but also somewhere that Tolkien spent a lot of time linking to Lord of the Rings writing Lord of the Rings so it, was, it seemed like the two kind of went hand in hand so I absolutely love those and of course I have to have my fairy lights over the top of them as well but I absolutely love it in here. I'll, I'll walk you in a little bit more and we can see the bookshelves which are probably one of my favourite things about this room. Oh hi I've just did my bookshelves to show you. <laughs> These are my rainbow shelves Shout out to Ava, my sister, because when we were moving everything in, she was feeling a little bit funny about me moving out, which made me feel really sad, and she just wanted to be able to help. So she laid all of my books out on the floor that I wanted in here and rainbowed them, which was the cutest thing. And she did such a good job. So shout out to her for doing my rainbow shelves. This is kind of a mix, but a lot of these are my YA contemporaries. I tend to come in here more in the summertime to pick a book because there's a lot less fantasy here. There is a decent mix though. I've also got my kind of not quite dark academia shelf here, but this is kind of my clever mysteries books, I would describe them as. A couple of bookmarks here as well in one of my Luma Crate pots. And my shelf of plants. <laughs> I have quite a few plants in this flat. I think I have 31 plants in this flat, 32 now, because this one it's a little baby, it's new, I planted it recently, it sprouted from an old plant. So yeah, I absolutely love this section of my room, partly because when I wake up I just get to look at this. I put a tapestry up because I thought the wall was a little bit bare without it. Got my crystal lamp, pumpkin because I'm filming this in October so I have to have a little bit of seasonal festivity around me. And yeah, I just, I just adore this angle so, so much. And I think I get a lot of people complimenting the rainbow shelves and the tapestry and things. So very proud of this section. This is where I put my face on. This is my dressing table. I kind of always wanted a dressing table. I used to sit on the floor in front of my mirror and this is my favorite thing. So this is where I sit in the mornings and get ready. And I know this is such a stupid feature, but I got a light fitted so I can shine it onto my face whilst I'm doing my makeup, which is really useful when it's darker in the winter. And then I've also got like just a chest of drawers there because what this flat is rubbish for is storage. There's a wardrobe behind you at the moment that's got like my jumpers and my pajamas in, but there is really, really pants storage. I have one cupboard in the hall that has got a boiler in it. So it's 
not got much space at all. So yeah, chest of drawers there. I've also got my bedside table down there, which contains my Lumi Glow alarm clock, which is the best thing. If you struggle waking up in the morning or you just feel really grumpy when you wake up, I would really advise it because it lights up slowly like the sun. And then it just has birds chirping as an alarm to wake you up and it's just really, really great. I feel a lot better since getting that. And below that, I've got all of my sex books, my body positivity books, some of my feminism books, but I've also got some of those in the other room. So good collection there. I have some really, really good ones. There's Sex Ed for, adu uh, for Adults I really like, and also a graphic novel Sex Ed book as well, which is really cool. Generally all books I wish I'd had when I was a bit younger, but I'm very glad to have now as well. And then we pan back around to my bed again, which is basically just the, the whole room. <laughs> I really enjoy my little sunflower on top of my bed. My mum got that for me, I think in Cornwall on a holiday and I've just had it wrapped around my bed head ever since. This is my ensuite. I love this room. The yellow in here is the same yellow I've used in another room. Ooh, the intrigue. You will probably know if you've already watched any of my videos where this yellow features. But I just wanted a bright ensuite because there's obviously no window in here. I wanted to make it nice and airy. And this is the room I put the most work into when I moved. This was completely ripped out. Apart from the toilet, that got to stay, as I'm sure you'll be thrilled to hear. But the shower was ripped out. I had a rainforest shower put in. The whole thing has been retiled. I've got like these black accents here with the um, towel radiator, the handrails, the loot roll holder, my mirror, there's a new sink which is a vanity unit, and the flooring which I am obsessed with. I love this flooring so so much. It kind of contrasts with the pattern of the tiles but I am absolutely obsessed with it so I am very 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 happy with how this room turned out because this was just something I've been planning and one of the ways I planned it actually was I took a picture of how it looked before I put that picture into Procreate on my iPad and then I drew the whole thing as I wanted it to look on my iPad and you know what it didn't look too dissimilar obviously with a pinch of salt because I'd drawn it but it was a really good gauge as to what the ring would look like which was cool also I have one of my many boobs so this is my little artwork in my bathroom I like having a bit of art in each of my bathrooms and this one has breasts in it. There is also, I don't think you'll be able to tell, but I feel like I want to show you anyway, on the back of this door, the coat holder is also a pair of boobs. So away from the bedroom ensuite scenario, we shall go to the main bathroom, which I know is immensely thrilling and is a different color to what we've seen so far. We have no yellow and no blue in this one. This bathroom has been haunted since 1979 when the ghost of a man passed away in the bath. Sometimes at night you can hear his wallowing howls as you drift off to sleep. We just kind of let it happen though. <laughs> so this is my main bathroom. I say my main bathroom, but to me my ensuite is my main bathroom. But this is the big bathroom, the bathroom that people use if they come round. This is Lauren's bathroom at the moment, for example. But this one is a deep green, which I would quite like to see throughout the flat a little bit more. But my god, this was hard to paint. If you are painting with dark green, good luck. This splattered everywhere and I did not retile in this bathroom, so I kind of had to be as neat as possible. The painting is a little bit shit, but this was the last room we did and we had to get it done before the flooring came in because we didn't want to risk staining the flooring, which it 100% would have. So yeah, this is my main bathroom. The things that I redid in here is it's got a new bath unit completely, a new sink, obviously painted, all the rooms have got like new curtains and blinds and I rejigged a shower unit and kind of blocked off the electric shower that's in here and put up a little unit here. One of my favorite things about this bathroom is I've got these electric candles, which I have in my other bathroom as well, but probably doesn't look like much right now, but in the evenings when I've got all the lights off and I draw the blinds and just have it all nice and cozy and I light those and have a bath, it's so nice and relaxing and that's why I wanted to paint it dark green in here because I wanted that kind of spa, dark, relaxing atmosphere and I think I've got that in here but I think this is the room that I wish I could do more to. I'd love to retile it and properly redo the shower unit and stuff but I was a single homeowner, I am a single homeowner owner and had a budget and this was kind of the room that was the most usable so I just did what I could and again we have the, is it Harrenbo? It's not Harrenbo but like whatever this flooring is, the kind of abstract gold and black flooring in here as well. Now we're going to my office which also kind of doubles up as a bedroom much more functional as an office. It was completely different. I've actually redone the office about five or six months after I moved in because I just it wasn't functioning for what it needed to be. But yeah, Lauren's been using it as a bedroom, but we've currently turned it back into the office for this tour. So this is my office. This is literally just across the hall from the main bathroom that we were just in. And this I absolutely love in here. I particularly love it in here in the evenings because I think it has a really cozy glow to it. 
But as I said, I changed this room about. So initially there was a bed there where you can see behind me, there was like a big day bed and that was able to pull out to be a double bed. So that was kind of where I was gonna sleep guests if Ava, my sister ever came round, when Lauren came down. And then my bookshelves that are there were all on the left of me here. I had a smaller desk and the wardrobe that you can see here that I attempted to kind of use to make the room bigger with the mirrors it still remained there because that is a heavy beast to move. So that was what the room did look like, but it just didn't work for me. It wasn't functioning. And I think I was trying to make the room work as a bedroom more than an office, even though I'm the one using it as an office 95% of the time. So I changed it around a bit, made it function as both, but more as an office. And that is the room I'm about to show you properly now. So this is my desk area, which was about half the size of this when I had the bed behind me because I had to be able to pull out my chair and I barely had any room. So this is literally just a standard Limon Ikea desk and the chairs, uh, the drawers, sorry, are the Alex drawers from Ikea. It's all just Ikea stuff in here because I just wanted to keep it simple. I probably will upgrade this at some point. I really enjoy the desks that have like the bookshelves built over the top of them and like the dark brown woods. But this is functional for now. I have two screens set up on it, which I absolutely love and happen to have open my Instagram and my Patreon, which you can find link down below if you're interested. Plug. And I also have like my art wall in front of them. So generally I'm trying to make the view interesting when I am sat there working. But I really enjoy having two screens set up. They're both curved screens, which I really enjoy. I know people are probably gonna ask what brand they are. They're Acer curved screens love them and I've got a mount for those and then I've got all my like laptop stuff set up so usually I will be working in here or in my lounge but depends on my mood really. I've also got what is half a book trolley and half a TBR trolley at the moment. It's a book trolley because as of filming this I finished my TBR for the month so this normally has my whole TBR in it but right now it's just got a plant and some other books on it and I've got my ring light for my videos which is probably immensely ugly being sat there but it's functional. As I said, there's not much storage in this flat. So this is, I think, my favourite part of my office. We have got my moon tapestry, which is again from Urban Outfitters. <laughs> I feel like everything's from Urban Outfitters. The boob hooks I said in my, uh, what was it called, ensuite, are also from Urban Outfitters. I don't think I added that in. But this is my replacement bed. This is my futon from Habitat. And there were three colour options. There was a burnt orange, a black, or like a Kind of emerald. I did initially want the emerald and it was out of stock and I just kind of went for this one and I'm actually really glad I did. I think it works well and this folds out to be a bed or a chair with like a footrest to it which is quite handy for reading sprints and then we've got my little magic ebook corner. This is where a lot of my non-fiction books are so I've got my feminist shelf continued in here and then all my historical non-fiction books and then up here is just kind of hardbacks that didn't quite make the cut to be in the other room. And then we've just got miscellaneous, a couple of arcs up here that are taller arcs. And then we just kind of go down with miscellaneous, various just different bits of non-fiction, Christmas books, poetry books, and like my old school yearbook and things like that are down here as well. I've also got my pin banners and my artwork, one of them being what my mum made me for my birthday a few years ago, which is literally a book's nest. Do you get it? So I love that and I've got my little candle set as well that my friend got me for my birthday this year. One of the things I love about these bookshelves as well is they are the home to two of my awards from UK YA BA, which is super exciting. I have got this one here, which is 2019 Most Inspirational. And then I've got 2020 Best Established. So I put those there in pride of place. Also, this whole thing is my background if I'm ever on a work call or a YouTube live. So I feel like it's a nice little setup. Generally, I just absolutely love this corner and I've got my plants down here as well. So it just kind of adds some green and my little rainbow light, which is from Urban Outfitters <laughs> again. So yeah, I, I clearly quite enjoy the homeware of Urban Outfitters. This is my whole background section. I've also here got a 100 books to read bucket list, which I'm slowly scratching all the books off of. I mean, slowly being like really, really, really slow. Why, hello. I didn't think I'd be seeing you here. It's a little narwhal that I have on my bookshelf that I made using little bits of cardboard cutout. But this is my desk, a little bit of a closer look. So I've got all my setup here for anything that I need to do, whether it be my day job or my book's nest job. My day job is a social media manager, so it's pretty helpful to have both screens. I've got my microphone here as well, because I do podcasts for my patrons. So I use that for that. Generally, I think this desk is missing something, but I don't know what. I want to make it a little bit less tech heavy and kind of hide some of the cables and the tech with, I don't know what, but I will get there. But I also, I enjoy my little pot, uh, plant pot, my little um, pen pot, which has got rainbow on it, which is, oh my God, no, not from, I was about to say it's from Urban Afters, it's not, it's from Anthropology, haha. -ha. 
probably the only thing I own from there because it's so expensive. But yeah, I've also got my nice Apple keyboard and my trackpad, which makes me very happy. And oh look, again, my Instagram and my Patreon seem to be up on my screens. How interesting. Look at all those tiers you can sign up to for my Patreon to get loads of extra fun content like podcasts, live shows, dedicated reading vlogs, and a really fun Discord family. Plug. <laughs> Okay, so now we will go into my lounge, which is connected to my kitchen. So that will be the last part of my flat tour. The ghost of this flat hasn't been seen for 10 years now, but at night we can still hear their whirrings. If you listen carefully, you might be able to hear them now. A true mystery. We'll try and communicate with the ghost more later. So we're heading to my kitchen now, which is connected to my lounge, but I feel like my kitchen is probably the, not boring option, but I feel like the lounge is the better option to show you. So first up, we have my hallway art, which is my Van Gogh poster that I got in Amsterdam on my 21st birthday. I absolutely love this piece of Van Gogh art and it just kind of brightens up my hallway. Although a couple of months ago, I had a cheaper frame and it fell down in the middle of the night and scared the crap out of me. Or was it the ghost? <laughs> so so we're heading to my kitchen first because I think you've probably seen a lot of my lounge but at the same time my lounge is the most exciting thing I think because I spend my most time in here and I just love it. So we'll go into my kitchen which is the most recent thing to be completed in my flat. <laughs> this is my kitchen! I am so so happy with my kitchen. This was a real vision for me when I was buying this flat. I knew that I wanted to change the kitchen because the old one just was not cutting it for me. It just wasn't modern, it wasn't me, and it was just kind of average, and it wasn't very functional as well. So as you'll see in the footage that I'll play at the end of this video of the before footage of this kitchen, it looks quite different. The tiling was horrible and flowery and the cabinets were just completely different. The whole thing just screamed old lady rather than woman in her 20s. So the changes I made in here and everything in here just generally being more bethified has been quite a journey, I think, partly because this started in December I think and then we locked down for four months and it couldn't be finished until four months later So I had a half finished kitchen, which was really fun including half tiles done half cabinets done and Thankfully a new worktop was installed I think by that point So at least I had that but the things I did new was all of these cabinets were basically redone and added with more detailing So we didn't strip the cabinets or anything, which is what I was gonna say earlier. We didn't completely redesign any of the kitchen stuff, we just kind of worked with what we had. So like the detailing on the side of these is actually MDF board that's added on top to just layer them a little bit, and they've all been painted. This is all paint. So I wanted something deep blue, I knew I wanted that. I went into B&Q and was looking at all the different kitchens that they did before deciding what I was going to do with mine, and I knew that that deep blue colour was one I really wanted, and I knew that it looked really nice with copper accents, so I did that, and then I got this walnut surface, which I'm just so happy with. I can't not smile when I talk about my kitchen because I think this is the biggest transformation that I see every day. Like my ensuite was more work, I think, because it was completely gutted, but this I see all the time because there is no door. There's this lovely archway that you're currently in the middle of right now, and yeah, I'm super, super pleased with it. I also... <laughs> Got a new tap. Now if you remember from about a year ago in one of my videos when this tap got installed I showed you and loads of people in the comments were like, oh my god, I love your tap. Bear with me people, this is why my tap is great. Are you ready for this great content? Tap on. <gasps> and it moves! <laughs> I know. That's the content you all came for, you just wanted to see my tap again. This was the first thing to change because every tap in this flat, the bathrooms as well, had two taps for hot and cold, and the hot was burning and the cold just didn't balance it out because there were two taps, so that was a challenge, so that had to go pretty quickly. Then over in this corner we just kind of have an extension of that corner because it's a kitchen. I got this shelf put in when all the cabinets were painted because I just wanted a little bit more storage, so I've got my like pretty jars up there, like my pasta, my popcorn kernels, my popcorn kernels, and my popcorn kernels. So they're all up there, and then we just kind of extend with my copper theme. I've kind of got a copper and chrome theme going on, but everything has some element of copper to it. The oven I wish I could change, but haven't yet, and a really annoying feature of this oven that I turned off for this video, is this will not stop flashing. And I don't know why, so we're just gonna turn that off again because it's really irritating. I've got my little cocktail corner here, which is a massive credit to Lauren from Fiction Tea because she bought me this really, really cool cocktail 
making kit which was amazing and such a surprise and I use it quite a lot when I do my strawberry daiquiris and my mojitos so I really really enjoy that and then we've just got my little cookbook section up there that I can pretend I know how to cook with and I really really don't. So that's my kitchen I hope you really enjoyed it and next we shall go on to my lounge and just like magic it's my lounge this connects to my kitchen so I can see everything from every angle and I don't know if I like that or not I think it makes it feel bigger but at the same time when I'm cooking it means that all the kind of steam and smells do seep into the lounge not that they're bad smells but you know sometimes you want to keep the two separate but that's okay so I think the newest feature to my lounge is my table which I made myself is it wonky? yes did I want to cry when I was making it? yes did I question how single people are meant to do anything without someone helping them? yes did I make it? Yes, I did. I'm really proud of making this. It was a journey. But I wanted, I had a kind of lighter oak and white circular table in the corner here, and it fitted the space quite well, but it was, it wasn't perfect. It was one that I got off Face Bay for 20 quid, which was a bargain when I was moving in, and I knew I wanted to change it, and I wanted something that matched the rest of the wood in this room. I know that you can probably see the white bookshelves, and you're thinking, how does that match? But it does match. There's more of this colour. So I wanted to add this in and currently I'm decorating it with pumpkins and candles and little bits of art for the autumn period. I also have a little kind of DIY-ish mirror in here. This was a mirror that I had in my old, old house and we just didn't have a place for it when we moved. So we put it in our garage and just never really thought about it. And then I tried to paint it like kind of, what's it called? Shabby chic. It's shit, I accept that, but it's kind of functional kind of for the space. It ho helps make the room a little bit bigger. Although I think my room is pretty, my lounge is pretty decent sized. I think when I came to look around, I was surprised by how big this flat actually was because I expected it to be really tiddly, but it's not too bad. I always have my fairy lights kind of swooping around the mirror and down to the bookshelves on either side of the room. These are fairy lights literally just from Amazon. I think I've got just typed in wire and string fairy lights and just got the best review ones. So the pièce de résistance of my lounge in my opinion, is the bookshelves, which we're gonna start with because I absolutely bloody love these things. So when I was thinking about moving, I think probably like for a year or two before moving, probably longer than that, I knew I wanted to have some kind of formation of bookshelf, bookshelf, TV unit, bookshelf, bookshelf, something like that. So whenever I was looking at places, I was always kind of working out if that would work. And one of the issues I found with a lot of places was radiator placement, and I know how expensive that is to move. When I moved to here though, they had really horrible night storage radiators which were plugged into the mains. So I basically spent a lot of my budget removing all of that and putting my own electric radiators in. So that meant I could play about with the space a little bit more. So I did this, which is my bookshelf wall and my TV wall and just everything I love. I have got my main bookshelves in here, I would say, like the ones that have got my main books, not to be dismissive to the other books, but these are the books that I take photos of most or have read and really loved or just think of the most pretty books, my special editions. So I'll talk you through a couple of the shelves, but I do have a bookshelf tour that was filmed last year, I think, at some point. I have a bookshelf tour, I can't remember when it was filmed, but I'll link that above. And if you want me to do a updated bookshelf tour, because I think the shelves have changed quite a lot since I did that one, please let me know in the comments because that's probably something I think I will do in the future, but let me know if you would like it or not. So as I said, if you want to see my updated shelf tour, let me know, but just a couple of highlights. I have my Lord of the Rings shelf, which I absolutely adore. This isn't quite finished yet. There is some special editions coming in the post that were meant to arrive today, but didn't, that will be replacing the paperbacks here. I'm going to keep the paperbacks still because I did annotate those when I last read the books. So I will keep those for my notes, but they will fill the shelf space here. And they are the special hardback black and then white editions of the books which have amazing what people call them now spreaders, sprayed edges spreaders. I like quite like the word spreaders, but I am so so excited to be adding those I was very very lucky to be able to save up my Waterstones points for ages to be able to get these and I also had a book token for my birthday so I was very very excited to be able to get them because I absolutely love this series and to have these special editions means a lot to me but I also have the illustrated editions who Caitlin who is a subscriber of mine bought for me which was so so kind of her she bought them as a birthday gift which was incredibly generous and I absolutely love them they are my favorite editions I've also got the like the new hardbacks of the old covers the leather bound ones and then these are kind of like miscellaneous other stories the leather bound ones are really stunning as well they're all beautiful so this is my Lord of the Rings shelf then we've also got my special editions slash Stephanie Garber shelf and my continuation of special editions so the special editions I've got here is my Lumicrate, the Poppy Wall series, which I absolutely love. And I just refuse to turn these in the other way because they're too pretty. And then we've also got my City of Brass Fairy Loot editions, which again, 
absolutely stunning and I refuse to have any other way around. And then we've got like, well this is two different series, but it's the Elizabeth Lim books that have arrived, two of them today. So we've got Six Crimson Cranes and then the Spin the Dawn books as well. And oh my gosh, they are absolutely stunning. These are also fairy loot ones. And I just think that that colour is not a colour I have anywhere else in my flat, the pink tones. So I quite like having those there. I've obviously got my plants over the top there. And oh, what's this? This is my award that I won for Book Influencer of the Year 2021, which takes pride of place. I hope in the centre. Lauren and I were trying to work it out earlier because these books arrived today, perfect timing. So yeah, that kind of is pride of place because that is an achievement I'm so, so proud of. And I think it's very important to celebrate your wins. So these are my kind of favourite-ish shelves, I would say. So going around, we have got my TV, which is pretty big. And I quite enjoy playing an ASMR room on here when I am reading in the evenings. I would normally have one on here, but I forgot. So I'm sorry. We've also got a couple of pumpkins decorating it and my Sylvie bobblehead. She bobbles. I've got my various game consoles down here as well, my Xbox and my Nintendo Switch. And then we have more of my books. There's not like overly an order to some of these, but I do have my Greek myth shelf, which I really, really enjoy. And then we've also got my Monstera. It's called Mary Shelley, because Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein and Frankenstein is about a monster. And my blanket basket, which is another thing that I knew I really wanted when moving into the flat. It's just something I knew I wanted to be all cozy. At Christmas time, this is where my tree goes. I don't know where the plant's gonna go this year because that wasn't here last Christmas, but I will find a place for her. Also, one of my favorite, if not my favorite pieces of art in this flat is this. This is my bookshop. It's Book's Nest, number 15. Lauren drew this for me. Oh my God, the talent. I can't remember if it was a Christmas or a moving in present. It was, I think it was Christmas. She's just mouthed to me behind the camera. It was a Christmas present, but I absolutely bloody love that. I just adore it and I think it's so good there because I'm always able to see it from where I'm sat down but Lauren has so much skill, follow her on Instagram. So carrying on over to the latter part of my lounge, this is where I sit in the evenings, where I do my relaxing, my chilling, this is my cosy spot. So I've got my bookshelves here which have kind of miscellaneous but also a couple of themed shelves. I've got my books about books, I've got my classics and I've got my horror shelf which I just did this morning because I got a load of horror books recently. Check out my horror haul if you want to see what they are. So I've got those bookshelves there. They weren't actually meant to go there, they were meant to go where Lauren's bookshelf picture was. I was going to kind of have like a curved line of bookshelves but it was just the kind of thing where you thought it would work and then when you actually came to do it it was too much so that's why they're two smaller ones there but I kind of like it, I think it works. I've also got some more plants. I haven't really been pointing out my plants so we've been going around but I think I have about 31, 32 plants. This one I grew from one leaf and it has become magnificent. So yeah, we've got some more of my plants there and more shelves from Urban Outfitters. <laughs> I've also got my coffee table, which is where the kind of matching walnut theme comes in. The coffee table was one of the first things I bought for my flat because I absolutely loved it. I love the kind of diamond pattern as well. And it matches my record player table, which is where my vinyl record player sits. I've got all my records down in my little HMB unit. I only recently got the vinyl record player, so I'm still building up a collection, but I absolutely love it. With the copper lamp over it and everything, it's just quite a nice cozy vibe, I think. But on my coffee table, I have to show you the little new addition. This is Laszlo. Laszlo's a little dumpling light. <laughs> Did you hear the reason so me? <laughs> I quickly want to show you a couple of details from my coffee table. So this is my little dumpling light. This is Laszlo. And he lights up and he's so cute. And guess where he's from? Urban Outfitters. <laughs> but he is a really cute little reading light and I really enjoy him. I got him last week, so he's a new addition. I've also got a little light up moon, which is really cool. Generally, I just like lots of cozy lights and I've got my continuation of plants on my table. I've also got my current read, which at the moment is The Spirit Engineer by AJ West and I'm quite enjoying it so far. And of course my pride and joy, which is my sofa. This was probably my biggest splash out purchase for this flat. I was looking at so many different types of sofas and I just really, really wanted something that was squidgy and comfortable. I've got scoliosis, so just having that place that my back doesn't hurt me is really, really important because there's so many areas I sit in that I am in pain. And this was from Next and I cannot remember the name of it, but this was my splash out purchase and I am in love with it. It's quite a soft gray, so I am constantly terrified of spilling things on it, but it's so soft, it's so squidgy, it's wide and deep, so I can really cuddle up and read in there, and I adore it. And then lastly, yes, that's right, lastly, we have got my reading chair. This has come with me from my home, back with my family home. This was a chair I bought 
quite a few years ago from Ikea because I always wanted a yellow reading chair. This is, oh no, what's it called, Strandmon? So yeah, this is my reading chair. I absolutely bloody love it. It's so cozy. It matches the walls perfectly. I don't think we've actually spoken about the yellow wall, but I wanted a big statement wall in here and it was either gonna be yellow or deep green. And I thought yellow would open up the room a little bit. So yeah, this is my reading chair. This is my lounge. This is my flat. I really hope you've enjoyed this flat tour. It's been a long time coming. Thank you so, so much to Lauren for filming this. I know that it's not necessarily all been one take, surprisingly. And thank you to the flat ghost for staying quiet. <whistles> there isn't a ghost in my flat, don't worry. It was special sound effects. So thank you very, very much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, please do give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what your favorite room in my flat was, if you'd like, or what you would paint your statement wall in your lounge. Subscribe to see more of my face on your feed. And as I've said before, you can find my Patreon link down below with lots of extra content from me. Can I also just say a massive thank you to anyone who's ever supported my content because I genuinely don't think without that support, I would have been able to do this. It's enabled me to be able to just live a slightly different lifestyle to the one that I thought I would live and that's been amazing. This is an actual dream come true and I'm continuing to achieve that dream, which is really, really great. And a massive shout out to my patrons because they've been a massive help for that as well. So yeah, with all that said and done, thank you so much for watching this video. Keep smiling, stay positive. I'm just gonna flop into my reading chair now and edit. Ah. <sighs>